I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile and we are speaking with uh, Deanna Victor who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the San Juan Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Well congratulations. Thank you. So uh, tell us first of all where you teach and what you teach. I teach at Marymont Elementary School um, which is a great little community school in Arden Park. I've been there about 17 years, uh, most of the time in fourth, fifth, or sixth grade. Uh, we are now officially a K-5 school, mm -hmm. so we stop at fifth grade now, but yes. So what grade level are you teaching this year? This year I have a 4-5 combination, okay. so it'll be my fourth time having a combination, but it's been pretty exciting every so time. So what's that like teaching a combo class where you've got kids different uh, levels? Uh, it definitely has its challenges, but I have found that it's uh, pretty inspiring and motivating. You kind of have to be on all the time. Mm -hmm. And the differentiation is not necessarily as challenging because even in a, a typical, you know, like straight fourth grade, you would have uh, lots of different levels. So that isn't necessarily as much. I think with the shift to common core state standards, um, I have done some work this summer kind of comparing the two grade levels and kind of seeing where they're alike and where they're different and where I can kind of teach whole class and and hit all of the common core at the same time and where, where do I need to really differentiate amongst grade levels. So it's taken a little bit more thought and planning mm -hmm. as the year begins. Well, you know, uh, teaching a combo class is, is I'm, I'm guessing, challenging to begin with, but when you are, throw in the common core and the adjustment to that, and then you've got common core for two different grade levels, it sounds like you're, doing, you're going to be doing some juggling. Yeah, I think that's part of always a, a combination, but I think whether it was standards-based or kind of our shift to Common Core, I think the, the same. It begins with knowing the standards or knowing the new Common Core state standards. So I feel like I already have, kind of have a basis, so I feel pretty confident with that. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I think we're going to have a great year. Yeah. So uh, tell me what your thoughts are about the Common Core and the adjustments that you have to make. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it. I think that it is a shift in students becoming greater thinkers and problem solvers which is really what our students, we want our students to be in the greater world outside of the classroom. Mm -hmm. And in my particular district, we're kind of focusing on something called critical literacy and kind of learning some different strategies around how to get kids more involved with literature and be really becoming, they, they talked a lot about divergent thinkers in our training, but really that is what we want. We want a generation of divergent thinkers who are great problem solvers and great collaborative uh, uh, workers with the people around them. So I think it's really going to be an exciting shift and perhaps not so different in some ways. Mm -hmm. And I think the differences will be exciting and I think inspiring to most teachers. So it's not just, you know, show me the answer, it's also show me how you got there and let's talk about it. Exactly, yeah. right. So that, that idea of less teacher talk, I mean the, the, the kind of traditional idea of this teacher standing at the front of the room lecturing all day, mm -hmm. which probably we experienced to some degree, you know, that, that really does not connect with Common Core. Of course you have to have, you know, direct instruction, but even within your direct instruction, kids should have the opportunity to talk to each other and show their thinking and show uh, how they're making connections. So I think it's a really exciting time. Uh, the, the kids might not notice that much of a difference. Uh, it's just kind of a different shift in what, but for teachers it's really kind of enforcing that and making sure that you're, you're kind of getting to that. Yes, I think some teachers have been using similar strategies that you know, are woven throughout Common Core for years. Mm -hmm. um, so perhaps depending on the students, but I, I, hopefully they will find that they have a little bit more of an opportunity to, to voice what they're thinking. You know, which, which really makes maybe education a little bit more student driven than it has been. So you've been teaching for 17 years now? I have. So uh, during that time, you know, what kind of changes and shifts have you seen in education? Well, when I came into education, standards were really becoming more of a focus, like our district shifted to a standards-based report card. Mm -hmm. So I saw that shift. And now, of course, our, our report card will shift to one uh, based on Common Core standards. So again, there will be a slight shift in what that looks like. But I think underlying there is always the idea of there are certain expectations you know, that we have. And, and we have, I think one of the things we're really good about in California is perhaps reflecting on what kids need to know and then looking at whether that's working or not, or whether that needs to be shifted a little bit. Um, so 
Um, the this, this standards, I think, were definitely a shift. I think also, you know, the idea of pull out the worksheet, you know, that whole idea is, you know, moving away. We are moving away from that and moving into something that looks very more student interactive. And more collaboration. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I think because we are aware of what the workplace looks like. Right. You know, the world looks different. So, you know, students need to leave um, being able to work with others. I think they always had to do that, but I think that, you know, the educational system was first established in a time when the world looked very different. So, you know, if you can really think of any kind of even major corporation that doesn't somehow work in teams or collaborative groups, I think that would be, you would be hard pressed to find that. Well, the successful ones do. Yes. Right. And that's right. what you're training the kids for. Yes, exactly. So that is a big change. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really kind of a, a different shift of because it used to be, you know, it, it, there's less, going to be less focus on the individual mm. and more on kind of a team approach. Well, I definitely think that uh, the individual has to be valued in all of that as mm. well. Um, just, just to recognize that people come with individual strengths. But yeah, I think it's going to be the power of the team, you know, the power of kind of the group process and the thinking that goes into that. Mm. So what, what made you become a teacher? How did you get to this profession? I have to say I always wanted to be a teacher. I, I, I actually, I'm not quite sure where I put it because I did save it for years and years. With my Barbies, I really, <laughs> really did have, you know, like a little turn-in box I made out of a, like a matchbox mm. and like a tiny little job chart and like little pencils. Okay, like, that's serious. Right, like I yeah. never, I never knew a time when I didn't want to be a teacher. So then when I actually, and my mom was an instructional assistant for, you know, 30 years at my elementary school. Mm. And I just always loved being at school. So when I, I finally got into my own classroom, it was kind of this natural fit. I, I always say it's kind of the most natural place that I've ever been. Um, and I still feel that way. Is there one teacher in your past that you can look back and think, okay, I wanted to be just like her or him? Yes, my, I had a third grade teacher, her name was Mrs. Warren. And she, like she taught us how to, how to count to 10 in Japanese. I still remember how to do that. You know, we did things um, that were kind of outside of the box, uh, you know, away from the textbook. And those are really the things I remember, but I also really remember that she was, I could tell she was excited to be a teacher. And so at the end of that year, she actually gave me this box of like school supplies. Mm -hmm. And it was literally like old post-its, you know, highlighters. And I remember I really treasured that, like it was important to me. You know, and um, so she was definitely an inspiration to me. Yeah, well, and hopefully you've got a student uh, somewhere along the line that'll look look at that way for, uh, for you. Yeah, I hope, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Do you find that w with the changes that you go through that there's a lot of motivation for you to kind of every day go in and, you know, try something different or try to do something a little bit more innovative for the kids? Always. Yeah. I think that's the difference between a good teacher and a great teacher. I, th I think really great teachers are always pushing themselves to do uh, better than they did the time before. I honestly can say I don't think I've ever taught the same lesson twice. I mean, it has somehow uh, changed or, or um, become something that was hopefully a little bit better than the time before and thought of it. And really, that's what I think is, is so exciting about teaching. You know, it is trying to think about new ways to connect with your kids or reach that one kid that didn't get it the first time. Um, you know, we're really lucky at my school. We have access to a lot of technology, so we have Promethean boards in every classroom, and I can use active votes where the kids can kind of check in. And, you know, we're really lucky we have these tools that I can use to engage students in ways that they're somewhat familiar with, you know, that, and we can really easily access all, all of these resources that we couldn't when I first started teaching. So there's interactivity there, and it's not just, you know, here's the information, you absorb it. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and they're just tools. I think you have to know how to use them effectively. But I think, I think really great teachers are always thinking about how to connect with their kids in a way, whether it's through technology or, uh, you know, a different kind of learning modality or something like Reader's Theater or a shadow puppet play, you know, something to help them connect to the information in a way that engages them. Well, congratulations to you. We're glad to have you with us. We've been speaking with Deanna Victor, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the San Juan Unified School District. Congratulations. Thank you.